Thank you. Uh, first, I'd like to thank the organizers for this wonderful meeting and for inviting me here. So, um, so this is not an integrability talk. Um, I'll try to give an overview based on this work done with um, Freddie, Katrisa, and Alice Wen, and also some ongoing work um, with my student, Yong Zhang. It's, it's more about the scattering amplitudes in massless quantum field theory. And we'll try to see if um, there are some other, there are some very interesting structures, string-like structures appearing from there, okay? So first, some motivations. So we, 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 we all know that there, uh, our understanding of the, uh, of the um, quantum field theory is incomplete. And uh, um, we've seen this from uh, trying to understand strong coupling. There are remarkable dualities, and we've learned so, so much from the, um, some theories are integrable, and, uh, and so on, and so forth. And uh, um, I wanted to emphasize that actually, you can look at something even much simpler, which is the perturbative scattering amplitudes in quantum field theory, and you already see some magics. So this is, um, for, for those who, 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 who know about this, we, we've already seen a lot of rich structures, and you also heard from Nima's talk yesterday, there are very rich mathematical structures, at least in planar N equals four, perturbatively. And also actually in more general theories, we, we see that. And in some, some sense, we are trying to find also some new pictures of um, perturbative S matrix. For example, uh, these are, uh, I mean, if you care, if you also care, the, uh, collider physics, this is also very important. Like when you, when you have a proton collider, this is basically what you do. You have a gluon uh, factory. You need to compute the S matrices of, of many, many gluons. And this seemingly very complicated object actually have very nice structures, as you will see. I mean, as, um, this is basically the line of um, research for amplitudes. And the goal, at least for me here, is trying to gain deeper understandings and even trying to reformulate quantum field theory uh, from studying their amplitudes. So here, I'm referring mo mostly to gauge theories and gravity. And, uh, um, and we'll see that there is indeed a lot of structures to see. So this talk, I'll focus on a particular direction, which is trying to find a weak, weak dual of the uh, S matrix in a large variety of massless quantum field theories. So this is basically like a new way of writing perturbative S matrix in terms of something like a um, correlator on Riemann spheres. Okay, so let me just give you a flavor of what, what, what I mean by rich structures and uh, very surpri surprising simplicity in, in the calculation of amplitudes. So already at tree level, you don't need to go, go, go too far. You already at tree level, if you want to compute n gluon scattering, you see there are many, many uh, Feynman diagrams. And then there are also, um, for each diagram, there are many, many terms. So this is the number of diagrams uh, increased with, with, with number of multiplicity. And this is actually a very simple calculation of, I mean, it's, it's just the five gluon scattering amplitude retain the uh, calculation after you sum it over the 25 Feynman diagrams. This is already a, a monster, okay? But this is expected because uh, when we try to uh, compute amplitudes using the textbook formulation of quantum field theory, we carry a huge redundancy, especially when we do gauge theory or even much more so for gravity. So such redundancy uh, implies that you, you must see, you know, like many terms and every term is not really gauge invariant and so on. So if you really focus on own shell S matrix, uh, you, 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 um, you know, you, you don't insist on manifest the locality and unitarity, then you actually see something much simpler. So for example, all this uh, huge number of Feynman diagrams, they add up to something like this. Uh, for those of you who know, this is the famous Park-Taylor formula of MHV gluon amplitudes. If you have two negative helicity gluon and the rest positive, the final answer of summing over millions of Feynman diagrams just, just boils down to, to this one line expression for a given color ordering, okay? So these are just the spinner helicity variables. Um, in four dimension for, for, for massless particles. So this is the beginning actually of 30 years of lots of progress. Um, uh, you also heard from Nima for, for computing S matrix in gauge theory and gravity and also trying to understand more of their structures. Okay? So uh, something in this, in this development that I want to uh, emphasize is this uh, twister string of uh, Witten's twister string, which is a theory that for the first time we try to understand the simplicity and the structures of the amplitude. And for the first time, we have a very nice world sheet model that rewrites 
this gauge theory treat level amplitudes as some string correlator. So this is not the usual string theory we talk about. It's a topological B model. Uh, and it has a target space of um, the super twister space that allows you that, 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 that uh, the, the, the string theory map from the Riemann sphere to, to that target space. And by writing down the correlator in this theory, we find, uh, Witten has found that this is actually the, the, the natural correlator is given by something very similar to the Park Taylor formula I just showed you. So if you, if you parameterize the, the spinner helicity variables like this, you see that this is essentially the Park Taylor factor, like this. How does this work? Okay. And uh, this comes from actually a current algebra on the, on the sphere. Okay? And uh, uh, the, the, the key idea that I first realized by Nair is that this, this Park Taylor amplitude is actually a correlator on the sphere. And then we can generalize this idea to all tree amplitude, not just the MHV1, uh, in N equals 4 super amuse, and led to this famous RSV uh, formula, which is a closed formula written from the world sheet that gives you all possible helicity amplitudes in, 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 in gauge theory, in particular in this uh, N equals 4 super amuse. But it's, 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 it's only tree level. And uh, this has inspired tons of works for the past decade. OK? So today I wanted to, to go further, go, go beyond Witten's twister string theory and introduce you this uh, new formulation, which is much more general. Because Witten, Witten's twister string theory is, is, is remarkable, but it's still very special. So it's only for the n equals 4 super amuse and only at tree level. So we wanted to ask the question, can we use similar idea? Namely, we use the uh, world sheet to describe the scattering amplitudes perturbatively. And uh, now we don't need supersymmetry, or we can go to space time dimension other than 4. We can go to more general theories, you know, general gauge theories, gravity, even effective field theories, and what about loop level? So these are the questions I try to answer in this, in this talk. So there's the, uh, one of the answers we found uh, almost three years ago is this um, um, formulation of general formulation of scattering of massless particles in, in, in arbitrary dimension. So in essence, what we found is just uh, some uh, very general way of writing first the tree amplitudes in massless quantum field theory for, for uh, tree amplitude in those theories in terms of uh, world sheet integral. And uh, this actually led to different theories, of course, corresponding to different correlator on the world sheet. And uh, the, uh, actually for, 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 for young mills, for gravity, and for, for some other theories, we found very compact formulas for them. So that's the, that's the first thing. And the interesting thing is that unlike Feynman diagrams, in this formulation, uh, the, the nice properties we love about the amplitudes are all manifest. So for example, the gauge invariance or the diffeomorphism invariance of, of, the, of the gravity scattering case. And this so-called double copy relations among different amplitudes and solve the collinear behavior and so on. They, they all become manifest on the world sheet picture. And uh, uh, there have been a lot of uh, nice works on, on, on uh, further understanding its world sheet origin, or world sheet picture, uh, now as the ambitwister string theory, which is uh, like a generalization of, of, of twister string to, to general dimension. So this is uh, basically the, the picture I took from um, Yvonne's talk, um, which is uh, we, we try to describe field theory amplitude in terms of this world sheet. You see that tree amplitude is given by the sphere uh, and, and then one loop at torus and so on. And, in, and also you can rewrite them as always on the Riemann spheres. So that's why Riemann sphere is very special here. But whenever you have more loops, you have some more pairs of punctures on the Riemann sphere to characterize the, the loops. And all this so-called world sheet um, um, Correlators, they are not really the string theory, uh, usual string theory um, world sheet calculations you, you, you're probably more familiar with. So there's actually no integrals through here. All the, uh, all the punctures are fixed by these so-called scattering equations that I, I need to, th all these integrals are localized. So, so I'll, I'll explain um, what that, that means. Okay, so the general feature of this formulation is based on this set of scattering equations that relate the kinematics of massless scattering, this Ka dot Kb, the, um, basically the Mandel stem of, of the scattering, and the, the punctures on the Riemann sphere. So if you give me n, part, n massless particle scattering, I can imagine them uh, come from, from, from space-time infinity and hit this sphere on this puncture, sigma 1 through sigma n. And now I want to express the scattering amplitudes of this n particle on this sphere. Okay? So uh, the key for this construction, as we point out, is this uh, scattering equation. These are n equations for these n punctures. And the defining feature for them is that actually, uh, given physical singularities, uh, you can 
so, so they know all the physical singularities of your scattering amplitudes. So basically at tree level you want to look at what are the poles of your amplitudes and on each pole the amplitude should factorize. And uh, these equations relate such poles or physical singularities to the boundary of the modular space of this, of this Riemann spheres. Okay. So, so in other words, if you, if you take this Mandelstam to some physical singularity, the sigmas also go to some boundary and the Riemann sphere start to factorize. This is why it can be used to describe very general massless particle scattering. And the simplest derivation for this, if you, if you notice, this is actually just the settle point equation if you take the Coban Nielsen factor from, from string theory. You, take, take, you, you do the settle point um, approximation like Grossman did. So you, you, you will see these equations. So based on these equations, we propose that very general massless quantum field theory tree amplitudes can be written in this form. Okay, so this is like an integral over the modular space. But as I said, these integrals are all localized by this set of delta functions imposing the scattering equations. Okay, and then you can write, you can try to find some uh, this i, this 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 integrand that sits there. That will depend on the theory. So the first part, this d mu, is the is the measure part. That's universal for any theory we believe it's it's, it's there. And then this 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 integrand part is is what 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 differentiate from the uh, differentiate the theories and. Uh, um, you don't really do any integrals. All the integrals are localized. So in some sense, you are just summing over all the solutions of scattering equations, and uh, uh, you evaluate the integrand and this Jacobian on, the, on every solution. Okay? So this is the general picture we give for tree amplitudes. So in this picture, S matrix is just some localized integral, or in other words, sum over the solutions of certain, uh, we call CHY integrand. So this will depend on the theory. And uh, as, uh, I forgot to say that there's this SL2C redundancy on the, on the Riemann sphere and also for the scattering equation. So you actually only have n-3 variables and n-3 equations. And it turns out that if you solve this scattering equation, you get n-3 factorial solutions of them. So it's quite complicated uh, polynomial equations. So when I say you sum it over solutions, you sum it over n-3 factorial of them. So this is like a particular way of writing amplitudes. Uh, that's very different from Feynman diagram. You see, I don't see any particle local interaction or whatever. It's just I map the kinematics of my particle on a sphere, and then I try to describe their interactions on the sphere. So in the end, in the end I'm, I'm writing my tree amplitude as n minus three factorial building blocks. So each of this uh, integrand divided by the Jacobian will be a building block that uh, I said will manifest the property of, of amplitudes. So our task. Uh, uh, at tree level, at least, is, is given this formulation. We want to find, for different massless quantum field theories, this, this integrand. Okay. So I also want to mention the well sheet origin of this um, of this formulation. So all everything I'm going to say uh, below can be actually derived from this um, ambitwister string theory, which is actually a chiral string theory that has target space called ambitwister space. This is nothing but the uh, in a complex file space time, uh, you, you, you define the, the, the space of all non ge geodesics. So, this is a generalization of what Witten had in, in, in 4D. And if you write down this, this, um, this chiral string theory here, uh, with this uh, map from the sphere, this P mu of sigma map from sphere to the, to the ambitwister space, um, uh, you see that scattering equation naturally emerge from there. And also, you see that here, this string theory is there's no alpha prime, it's only the massless spectrum. So um, you can imagine that when you quantize this system to ca calculate this correlator, you can find uh, the formula I just, I just showed, that, that, that all the modular space integral are localized on the scattering equations. Of course, this alone doesn't give you any physical theory, so you need to couple them to some matter system, and then you can, you can see the formulas I, I'm going to show you. And this, at very recently, there has been some uh, very nice work further understanding where does this ambitwister string come from. So actually, uh, it's very puzzling, right? Because the scattering equation actually arises in the tensionless limit of usual string theory. Namely, you take alpha prime to infinity. And we're very used to the idea of Gross, Grossman that in the, in, in, the, in the tensionless limit, if you quantize the, this classical null string, that's called the, 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 the tensionless limit of, of the usual string theory. If you quantize it in the usual, you get all these higher spin excitations. They're all massless, but you get all of them. But there's actually an alternative way of quantizing them, a, a, a different quantization scheme that gives you the ambitwister string, where you only keep the, the, um, the gauge, gauge boson or, or, or graviton that you, that you want. So this ambitwister string is actually not related to the usual string, except you first go to the uh, alpha prime to infinity limit. Okay. 
So let me just show you some formulas for, uh, for, for, for either you can derive from ambitious string or directly looking at our, our, uh, our, our general formula. So as I said, uh, it's, it's given by this measure part times some integrand. So I'm, I'm going to give you three, three examples of uh, what these formulas may look like, what this integrand may look like. So these are, these are formulas that describe you all the tree amplitudes in general relativity, perturb perturbative general relativity in Young Mu's and in this phi cube theory that's um, actually in the by a joint of, 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 of groups. So this, this is a Lagrangian. So it's actually a very basic building block, this, this last one. So let me just remind you, there are two ingredients here appearing in the integrand. So the integrand always being written as factorized form, some, some I left times I right. And there are two ingredients here. One is this Park Taylor factor I already introduced. It encodes all the color dependence. And the other is this Fafian that encodes the polarization dependence when you have gluons and graviton. So if you look at the first formula, it has two Fafians. So it actually describe you the, um, um, the uh, Einstein gravity coupled to Dilaton and B field. If you take the symmetric traceless part, it's, it's just the, the, a determinant. It's the Fafian square that, that gives you the pure graviton scattering. And the second formula, you have a Park Taylor and a Fafian. This is the Young Mu's um, amplitude that you have the polarization vector and the color. And then the third one is actually pure scalar amplitude because you don't have any polarization. But now you have two color groups or two flavor groups. Okay, so this is a general formula that encodes all this. So, in a, for example, in the, in the gravity case, it has infinite number of vertices and all encoded in this formula. And uh, this is a Park Taylor factor. Now I'm going to tell you what this Fafian factor look like. Okay, this is literally a Fafian of a matrix. So uh, this is actually a two n by two n anti-symmetric matrix that has two null vectors. So we need to first uh, define, reduce the Fafian by deleting two columns and rows. But let me tell you the, how, how, how simple this matrix look like. So it's actually uh, of these four blocks that you have um, entries, something like k dot k over sigma minus sigma, and epsilon dot epsilon over sigma minus sigma. And also this C part is epsilon dot k with a, with a diagonal, uh, non-zero diagonal term. So this is it. This, is, this matrix is what you need to describe uh, gluon scattering or graviton scattering if you, if you do it in, on a worksheet. And where does it come from? It's actually come from the superstring correlator. So if you compute n uh, in open, open, open type 1 string theory, you, if you compute uh, n gluon vertex operator, they are correlators, uh, you find this Fafian on the support of scattering equation. So the scattering equation helps you simplify it a lot. And you can check that this Fafian has very nice properties. It's, it is multilinear in the polarizations. And uh, most importantly, it's actually gauge invariant. So this is a promise. I wanted to give you an object that's manifestly gauge invariant. And here it is. Uh, the, the way to see it's gauge invariant or diffeomorphism invariant for the determinant is to do this linearized gauge transformation and the Fafian or the determinant should stay the same. Right, that's the, that's, the, that's the definition. So here we can see that if you replace epsilon by k, two columns or, and two rows of the matrix become identical. So it's determined or Fafian just vanishes. So this is really the first time we can write the Young Mills or gravity amplitude as n minus three factorial building blocks, as I said, summing over all the solutions. And each one of them is already gauge invariant. Okay. And you can see also here the, 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 double, the so called double copy relations that, that express the closed string as a square of open string correlator. And in the CHY integrand language, it's just the gravity is equal to Yang Mu's square. Okay, so let me, let me explain in a few, just, just a few words about this double copy relation. So this has been, uh, this has been discovered since uh, the 1980s, first as a field theory limit of the relation between closed string amplitude and open string amplitude. So now as the KLT relations. So you write the uh, gravity amplitude as a double copy of Young Mu's partial amplitude with some, um, some kernel sitting, sitting in, in, in between. So now we can see a very nice derivation of this relation simply by noticing that the gravity integral is given by two Fafian, and the Young Mu's case is given by Fafian with a Park Taylor. And if you do a line, just, just some linear algebra exercise, you see that uh, this is derived with this kernel, now we understand as the inverse of that matrix of phi cube theories. So basically, this is a very general way of seeing the double copy relations among different uh, amplitudes of different theories. We'll see that in, in more general case that, that also works. So let me spend a, a, a few minutes on, on generalizations of, of this idea to theories, not, not just Young Mills or gravity. So you can do some operations that bring you from some, um, some theories we know 
we are familiar with to some, some other theories. For example, I give you the formula for um, n-graviton scattering. Okay? Now, if you do a dimension reduction, you can get Einstein-Maxwell theory in lower dimensions. And this is just a very uh, straightforward way of getting all the Einstein-Maxwell scattering amplitudes out of the gravity amplitude because the formula works in any dimension. So I can do the dimension reduction on the formula. And this is the result, uh, the first, uh, the first uh, equation. So basically, I, I, I do the reduction. I find that one of the Fafian remains, and the other Fafian becomes this Fafian prime of A that I, I, I defined before. It just only depends on the momenta. And then the other uh, Fafian X is just this matrix this, this, um, that depends on the flavor. And similarly, you can do the dimension reduction on yang mu theory to get yang mu scalar. Okay? So these are very, very simple uh, operations. There are some interesting, more interesting operations that bring you from this kind of, you know, the Einstein-Maxwell theory where all, all, the, all the lower spin particles are just uh, photons. They don't interact among us themselves that you can, you can generalize them to einstein yang mu's. So actually, the, the, the yang mu theory minimally coupled to, to Einstein gravity. So this is, a, in some sense, a direct sum of two, two different theories. And you can also do it for yang mu's with the phi cube theory I mentioned. So this, this new operation can be realized on this world sheet picture very easily, that you see, all, uh, you see some nice formulas about all this um, einstein yang mu's amplitude and, and, and so on. And uh, uh, I, won't, I won't give you detail about that, but I wanted to discuss a new class of theory that's also very natural in our construction, which is this effective field theories, as I mentioned. And actually, they are very, very special effective field theories uh, of, 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 of Goldstone scalars because they have enhanced address zero. So if you take one of the, um, one of the Goldstone scalars to be soft, the, the amplitude not only vanish, but vanish to some, some order in the, in the soft parameter. So these are all very naturally described because we have this new building block, Fafian prime of A, that naturally appear. So just like the Fafian, Fafian of the polarizations give us yang mu's and gravity, now this Fafian prime of A is going to give us <laughs> scalar theories, but very special ones. This, this uh, Goldstone scalar with, with enhanced uh, um, address zero. So, so let, me, let me remind you what, what are these theories. We could, we, could, we could work backwards. We could write down a formula that, that, that you know, is all, looks all consistent and trying to ask what, 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 what are the theories here. So we, I can take two copies of this Fafian prime A, or just the determinant of A, and then multiply it by Park Taylor. This is a valid CHY integral that has left part and right part. Okay? And what is this theory? This theory is some scalar theory that's uh, in a joint of some group, because I have a Park Taylor factor, and it has two derivative coupling. This is the, the Cairo Lagrangian, the nonlinear cycle model of, of, of massless scalars. Uh, has this Lagrange. So this simple formula actually describes you to, to all multiplicity the tree amplitudes of this uh, theory. You can also do the Fafian A square with this polarization Fafian that we're, we're familiar with uh, by now. So this is some gauge boson, but there's no color. So are, these are actually photon theories, but they are very higher derivative photon theories. What can they be? It's just the born infeld theory. Okay, so this formula describes you all the tree amplitude in Born Infeld here. And now you can do dimension reduction again to get uh, DBI. So that's, the, that's the, another class of exceptional um, effective field theory I talked about. And then there's something very crazy. You can put this um, Fafian A to fourth power. This describes you a single scalar theory with many, many derivatives. And this is actually known um, um, as a Galilean theory, but a very special one. So actually, this is a uh, the Galileo theory that has the nicest uh, soft uh, behavior, uh, enhanced address zero. So you can also see this double copy relation that I mentioned before. I told you that gravity can be expressed as two copy of Young mu's, and now this, exactly the same logic work here because we have all the formulas for them and we can see how they are related as this, as this direct uh, product. I mean, um, the, the um, direct sum I mentioned is, is, is the adding two theories together. Now I can take the product of two theories, just like I take two Young mu's, product of two Young mu's theory, I get gravity. So here, if I take Young mu's with nonlinear cycle model, their double copy actually gives me the, the um, their product gives me the born infeld theory. Or if I take the square of the two copy of nonlinear cycle model, I actually get this special Galileon theory. So there's, there's this general, this double copy idea has been generalized to, to, to this. So this is like a, a landscape of, of, of all these theories that I talked about. We can study the, 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 the first uh, um, column is from gravity. You do dimension reduction, you get Einstein-Maxwell. And you can actually generalize it to something einstein yang mu's, which has two couplings. If you take g yang mu's to zero, it goes back to Einstein-Maxwell. If you take um, g Newton to zero, it gives you yang mu's. 
OK? So this is like the, um, the, the first column. And then the second column repeated itself, starting from Young Mu's all the way down to phi cube. And the effective field theory I just talked about is the third column that starts from bi, a born in file that gives you dbi, and, and, and the, 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 the other limit is the nonlinear Sigma model. OK? So this is the, like, all the nice theories that appear very naturally in this world sheet picture. Of course, other, theory, other methods, quantum field theory, you can also try to describe their tree amplitude in this way, but the, the result will be more, more, more complicated. You will require more than just the simple building blocks. And uh, let me just mention that this uh, makes not only gauge invariant uh, manifest, but also the soft behavior. So recently there have been uh, some, some studies of the um, soft, Weinberg soft theorem and its extension. Um, for, for its generalization for gauge theory and gravity that's supposed to be related to the asymptotic symmetries of space-time. And this, this, this theorem has become very uh, simple to derive, or at least uh, um, easy to understand from, from, the, from all the formulas we give. And the formula also implies you that for this more weird, this effective field theories, there's also something very, very similar. So for nonlinear circle model, it's like gauge theory, you have the uh, leading and subleading soft uh, uh, Factor and for the DBI and Galileo, you have uh, also sub sub leading. So there is a very this all, all these soft factors of the effect field theory look very similar to the to the to the gauge theory case. And you can also go to 4D. You can see the how the uh, not only not only double soft of scalars but also double soft limits of fermions that tells you something about nonlinear realized uh, supersymmetry. Okay, so let's 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 systematically talk about how how this goes back to 4D. I think this is uh, something. Um, that, that hasn't been emphasized uh, uh, enough in this, in, this, in this setting. So we all know that there's Witten's twister string theory in, in 4D that describes you the n equals 4 super Young mu's. And now we have this new representation that gives you Young mu's gravity and all kinds of theories in general dimension. What about their, their reduction to 4D? So the reduction to 4D is actually very interesting. It's, uh, it, 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 it actually simplified the formula. So the formula is already very, very simple in general dimension, but Obviously, in 4D, you should see further simplifications. And this, this has led to this Witten's formula, RSV formula, but also some new formulas for, 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 for new theories. So the key here is we want to see that the scattering equations actually fall into different sectors when you go to 4D. So this, these are just the property of the equations or the, the solutions of the equations. So actually, they fall into n minus 3 sectors labeled by this k. And this has nothing to do with helicity. I'm just talking about the, uh, the, the reduction of scattering equations to 4D. Okay? So if you, if you remember, I said I can sum it over all the solutions. But now the solutions, they naturally split into different sectors. So for, for example, for k equals 2, it's just the, the uh, for, some, for some of you, you may know, it's the MHV solution, where the sigmas are proportional to the lambda. For k equals n minus 2, is the MHV bar. So there are only one solution in that sector. But in other sectors, it's still polynomial equations. You have, you have multiple solutions. So in any case, you're just summing over all the sectors, and then you're summing over the solution that belong to every sector of the CHY formula. And you can actually define the, the second sum as an amplitude evaluated only on that solution sector. So, so this, is, this is the idea that you can, you can actually write the d-dimension CHY back to 4D, to, but now depends on each sector. Okay? So just give you the flavor of what, 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 what are these 4D scattering equations that in different sectors. So they are very closely related to this, um, this Grassmannian way of encoding uh, the kinematics. So basically, the scattering equations in D-dimension, if you brought them back to 4D, they are, they are, they are this, just this uh, more familiar constraints from, from RSV or from Grassmannian. This, this K plane orthogonal to the lambda tilde two plane and contain the, the lambda plane. Uh, and uh, if you do a GLK fixing, this is the 4D scattering equation. So you see that I split the n particle into set of k particle and the remaining n minus k particles, and and this is the equations involving their their spinners and the, the punctures. Okay. So in 4D we have work directly with this set of equation in each k sector. So what does this buy for us? I mean, you will see, OK, you can do something in k sector, but in the end, you still need to sum it over all the k, all the different sectors. And for example, for the phi cube theory I described, this is the case. So there's nothing to, to learn from this reduction. You go to different k sector. Every sector gives you something not really physical. You need to sum it over them to get the physical answer. But that's not the case for young mu's and gravity. For young mu's and gravity, it's, it's just great, because also the Fafian, they uh, has a sector, natural sector, which is the helicity sector. So you need to tell me 
uh, which of the gluons you, you, you choose to be in negative helicity and the remaining in positive helicity. So there's something very nice that happens, which is the Fafian actually vanishes unless you evaluate on the same solution sector as its helicity sector. So out of all the N minus, N minus three sectors, in, most of, in all of them, the Fafian just vanishes, except on that sector that uh, corresponding to its uh, negative, number of negative helicities. Okay? So, so this tells us immediately that for Yamuas and gravity, when you go to 4D, you can focus on one sector, and that gives you the particular helicity amplitude for them. Okay? And also for these effective field theories, it's actually very interesting. This Fafian of A is only non-vanishing in the middle sector. So there's only one sector for all this effective field. Notice they are, they are scalars. I'm not talking about their helicity, but their solution sector is singled out as the middle sector. So you can see that this 4D scattering, 4D um, formulas is actually much simpler than the D-dimension one. For example, the, the Yamuse amplitude, it has a CHY integral that's just a puck taylor So for the, if you're familiar with the RSV formula, you know this is, this, this is the case. And for the gravity case, it's just uh, some simple determinant and same for this DBI or the supersymmetric generalization of DBI. So in, 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 in way of going back to 4D, all the Fafian actually, I mean for the young mules, the Fafian actually completely dropped and all the helicity information is encoded already in the scattering equation when you choose who is negative and who, who, who are positive. And this is like, this is reflecting the fact that the young mules theory is conformal in, in uh, at least at tree level, that the, the, the whole dependence of the, the, the integrand is just a puck taylor factor that doesn't even depend on kinematics and so on. Okay, so and I, you can actually generalize this Yang Mu's, super Yang Mu's formula to include, um, to, to, to all amplitudes in massless QCD. Now you just need to replace all the gluinos there by quarks. So this induces you some uh, fermion Jacobian factor that depends on the helicity and flavor of the quark, but you can, you can in principle do that. So this solves the problem of representing all the tree amplitudes in QCD um, in, this, in, this, in this way, okay? So I'll probably um, skip this, just, just to let you know that we can, uh, uh, you, can, you can also go to the case that you have a Higgs boson, or in other words, uh, equivalently you have a uh, form factor with chase F square coupled to the, to the gluons. You can write down the 4D uh, scattering equation formula for them, and this, this, this should have some very interesting connection to the other approaches to, to form factors in N equals four superior mills. So let's turn to loop level in the, in the remaining 10 minutes I have. So um, all I've been telling you now is, is basically some um, well sheet formulas that describe your tree amplitudes in a large variety of uh, massless quantum field theory, right? So what about loop level? So the first hint that there definitely are loop generalization is that all these formulas I told you can be derived from the ambitracer string on the sphere, okay? So if you want to do one loop, you just go to torus. That's very natural. So you just evaluate your string correlator now on a torus. And this is indeed what has been done for the supergravity case um, by these people. So they evaluate the ambitracer string correlator on a torus and they get this expression. So this is basically a torus correlator that noted is there's a, there's a modular parameter tau. And then this is the delta p square is the scattering equation now for one loop on the torus. You see this, all this um, uh, Jacobian theta functions and so on, 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 um, on the torus. So this is very nice. So there are arguments that this formula should be correct. You know, it gives the correct factorization and so on. But the problem is, uh, up to now, nobody has know really how to directly compute it to give you the, to, to check if it gives you the, the correct one loop amplitude. So actually, a very nice way um, discussed in, 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 this, in this paper is that you can, you can um, use a residue theorem to not evaluate this whole thing on torus, but to localize it on this, this limit of tau goes to I infinity. So this is literally like the picture I showed you from the beginning. Originally you have a torus, and if you go to this limit, it becomes a sphere again with two more punctures that, that hole shrinked into a, to, to, to two more punctures that uh, you call it a, a nodal Riemann sphere. So, so this is a very nice uh, approach that you can actually derive some uh, scattering equations and uh, formulas that's just similar to chi, because now you are dealing with a, with, a, with a Riemann sphere just with two more punctures to represent you the loop momentum, the, one, the, 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 the loop momentum at one loop. So this is the scattering equation at one loop. You just have, in addition to the K n, n um, massless particles, you have L and minus L as this momenta of the two additional punctures. 
and you can fix them to be zero and infinity using the SL2C. And uh, you can also get the uh, integrand, so the, the CHR integrand for this supergravity, which is basically the spin sum of the, uh, of the torus uh, fermionic correlator, but now evaluated on this special limit, tau goes by infinity. So again, it simplifies. So it just actually simplifies to three Fafian structures. There's a different uh, spin structures you need to sum over. Okay, so that, that is the one loop. If you take the square of this Pn, this Pn is the analog of the tree, uh, the, the Fafian of polarization, not at one loop. So if you square it and plug in the formula with the scattering equation, you get the you get the correct, correct uh, one loop um, supergravity answer. So one loop supergravity amplitude. So this is the way you, you don't really work on the torus, but you work back on the, on the Riemann sphere with, with, with more punctures. And there's actually more progress on, on, on uh, two loops very recently uh, on how to, how to work on not the Riemann sphere now with two more, two more pairs of, two additional pairs of punctures to work out the, the two loop supergravity answer. But all this, uh, the, the only, um, and between the string that can be defined beyond tree level is actually the supergravity one. So nobody knows how to do it for superior mills, for any other theories. And also this derivation uh, relies on lots of subtleties on the, on the, on the, on the torus. So actually we want to find a, something more, more clear. So we wanted to ask the question, given that we already have all these tree level formulas, and basically this picture is telling us the one loop picture, the one loop formula is very similar to tree, but now you need two more additional punctures with, with momenta L and man, minus L. So can we, can, we, can, we do, can we get loops from trees? So there's actually a very well-defined way of getting loops from trees, just the Feynman tree theorem, that you take forward the limit of tree amplitude with two more legs uh, that uh, has momenta L and minus L, and uh, uh, up to some diver possible divergence when you do this, uh, you can get the the set of all one loop Feynman diagram. So there is this way of, of going from tree to one loop. And actually this issue of divergence, and also you need this L to be off shell, both issues are solved in the, in the, in the CHY form. So namely, I take the forward limit of tree amplitude, but I choose the tree amplitude to be represented by a CHY uh, world sheet integral. And then I exchange the integral and the forward limit, I get this one loop formula. And they turns out to be exactly the same as those derived from the torus, okay? So this is the one loop CHY formula. You see that there's a one over L square in, in, in front of everything. And then there's this integration measure of one loop scattering equations looking like this, okay? And then you have an integrand that depends on uh, external and the loop momentum. So naively, you just look at it, it seems, so the reason that we didn't, we didn't get this before the torus picture appeared is because this just seems wrong, right? So, Oh, you, you know that you should get all these uh, propagators at one loop level that looks like um, um, uh, L, L plus some K squared, right? This is the physical propagator. But instead, you only see this L dot K. So you don't see the L squared term, except the overall L squared, one over L squared you put. So this seems to be a completely wrong representation, but it actually turns out to be equivalent to the original one after you perform the loop integral. So this is a very, uh, different representation of, of the loop integrands, but the difference only uh, integrate to zero. So this is in concrete how you, how you find from the usual local representation of this, of this loop propagator, di, you do partial fraction and you shift the loop momentum, you can get the new representation that we can compare with this formula. So this is a key thing that realize you can go from tree level to one loop and, and get the r correct result. So everything I said about tree level, you can now do four limit to it to get the one loop version, the Park Taylor formula. Now you have two more punctures, you need to identify their color, something over the color, you get this one loop Park Taylor. And the, the, um, you get some one loop Fafian, as I already mentioned, uh, depending on what, what the forward limit particle are. It could be scalar, it could be gluon, it could be fermion. So you have um, the, all the different spin structures. Okay, so in this way you can get the one loop formula for phi cube, for uh, Young mu's and gravity, you just take Park Taylor square or Park Taylor with the gluon one loop Fafian or the gravity case Fafian square. And you can also get the formula I showed you before, the supergravity formula, which is you need to sum over spin structure of a gluon and uh, fermion, right? So this is, this is basically the way we understand it now for getting the one loop amplitude as for limit of tree. And obviously this, sh there should be also generalization to higher loops if you further take forward limit of, of um, amplitudes. And also, uh, the, 
at loop level now we can also manifest the, the, the gauge invariance soft theorem and, 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 and amplitude relations. However, you can, you, can, you can see something is not quite right here, or, or not, well, something is not, not, not very satisfying here, which is the, the super gravity and super young muse uh, formula is actually more complicated than the pure young muse or pure gravity uh, formula. This is actually expected because this is more like an RNS formalism where the supersymmetry is not just not manifest. You need to sum it over spin structures when you do super gravity, okay, or super young muse. So we wanted to see if there are uh, how to make this summing over spin structure, uh, uh, how to do this sum such that the supersymmetry becomes very manifest. So this is some, 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 some new work uh, I'm, I'm going yeah, to show you now, which is uh, we can get some very nice um, one loop formula for the, for the, for the super amuse and super gravity case. So basically the PN I told you about, which are very complicated uh, summing over different spin structure, can have an explicit expansion like this, it's a recursion. Uh, that express it in terms of n minus one point Fafian with a soft factor times the homogeneous piece that doesn't depend on um, loop momentum. So this homogeneous piece, you can write it actually, actually as this this Green's function is gij appear in the in the uh, m times times this trace of linearized the uh, field strings. So this is the way of writing down the very general one loop Fafian in a supersymmetric theory. You expand them in terms of the how many powers you have in loop momentum or in the Green's function. And this is a, a closed formula for any number of points, and it makes supersymmetry actually manifest. Okay? So let me just give you an example. For four points, it's completely trivial. There's no IL dependence. So if you look at the spin sum, it's not obvious. You need to perform the sum that they collapse, and the final answer is just this TA tensor of the four point. This is the one loop prefactor that multiply the box. right? And five point is also very simple. It's given by the soft times four point, and then this one power linear in the Green's function with this uh, generalization of the TA tensor now to, to five field strings. So you can actually go home, and you can find the complete answer, not, not just in 4D now, in, in, in 10D, for example, the complete answer of this um, one loop uh, correlator that gives you the, the amplitude. Okay, so this is the formula you write down in the end. You have super amuse and super gravity if you have one power of p or two power of p. And uh, as I said, plugging in the, the, the closed formula for p, I, I, just, I just told you, this leads you to a very explicit and uh, complete um, representation of the, of the one loop amplitude. And this is very, in, in spirit, very, very similar to the, to the field theory limit of string amplitude that, that, that could make, make, make more um, contact. And also, all the, when you reduce back to 4D, all the structure become very, very simple. So, uh, our conjecture is that this PN actually in 4D, again, factorized into some angle bracket part and some square bracket part. So this is like, I think, a uh, very, uh, very, very um, exciting possibility that this will give you some generalization of the RSV formula, so the original Witten's twister string uh, formula to one loop. Now apply it to n equals 4 and also can generalize it to n equals 8. Okay, so this is, this is um, the, the, the ongoing project where we're looking for, uh, so given the, all, this, all this construction, at generally at loop level, they actually hugely simplify when you have maximal supersymmetry, and especially when you go back to 4D to use spinner helicity and so on. So there's this um, possibility that we can construct twister string amplitude, not just for one loop in the grand, as we've done here, but even for higher loop in the grand. Okay, let me just summary here. So basically, I present you the new picture of describing massless particle scattering, and not through Feynman diagram, but through the, these punctures on Riemann spheres. And this might suggest to you that there's a string theory du dual, uh, weak, weak dual to the, to the, to the S matrix in massless quantum field theory. As I said, it's complementary to Feynman diagrams, actually. It's written as the summing over n minus three factorial building blocks which manifests all the properties. And it, it, it's not just for a single theory, but actually for, for a bunch of different theories. At, at least at tree level, we see how different operations like direct sum or direct product of theories are realized in this, in this, in this formulation. And a very uh, important question is what, still, what is really the scope of quantum field theory dis naturally described in this, in this formalism? Okay? And also at loop level, I told you that um, um, from higher genus, calculation is actually very difficult, but you can go to the, uh, the, the limit, or you can, you, can, you can use forward limit, or using the counter deformation argument to go to Riemann spheres with, with more punctures. 
And especially for the maximal supersymmetric case, we seem to see some very nice structures. And the hope is that we can, again, go back to our favorite toy model of planar n equals 4 superamuse and hope to see that uh, this, 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 um, this twisted string kind of formula now start to add, work at loop level. And uh, uh, maybe someday we'll, we'll find some all loop integrand in terms of these twisted string formulas. OK, thank you. Yeah, I think it's very, very closely related to that. So you see the, the difficulty of the original formula for, I mean, the, why, why the original formula is so complicated for super mills is because they're in an RNS form. And now this, at least at four point, I think they realize both at one loop and two loop level, uh, uh, the, after you do the spin sum, it's actually equivalent to trying to write MB twister using the pure spinner language. And now what I've just showed you, the, 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 the one loop formula for any multiplicity is actually something I think uh, very similar in, in that sense. So it should be possible. So when I, when I try to compare with the right answer from field theory limit of string theory, it, it is exactly the pure spinner uh, result that, 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 that I was looking for. So there should be some, I haven't, I haven't really, so for us it's just really a mechanical work to, to really simplify the spin sum, but there must be something deeper connected to pure spinner in, 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 in this front, I think. Uh, not fully realized. I think for one loop and f for, for four point, there's, there's some discussion that uh, it, could be, it could be done like this, but uh, it's, it's not a complete story. Yeah. Right, so um, w without supersymmetry, you mean? Yeah, so, so, so of course, uh, yeah, with, um, with fermions, you cannot do it in any dimension. So there are two cases we know how to do it. First is in 10D. So in 10D, you could, you could include, you could generalize the Fafian to include some gluinos. And that's, that's strictly in the, in the supersymmetric case. We know how to do it for one pair or two pair. And it's getting more and more complicated just as when you try to compute some uh, correlating RNS as formalism with, with more and more fermions. The second thing is very, very simple, it's in 4D. So basically, as I told you that the, 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 the CHY formula for gluons, they reduce to the gluon component of the RSV Witten formula in 4D. That guy can be super symmetrized. So it, it basically, it's, it's a given, or it's already 10 years ago, we know how to write down uh, super young muse amplitude, including gluidos in 4D using this formula. But the new progress is that, I mean, actually based on, 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 on your guys' work, that we can actually express the color ordered um, gluon quark amplitudes in terms of the gluon gluino amplitude. So if you, if you use the RSV formula for gluon gluino amplitude, you can get the, all the tree amplitudes in, in massless QCD written in this form. So as I, as I showed you, all the dependence on the quark is encoded in a determinant in, 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 in some Jacobi. So that is basically the, the status. I think it's very interesting to try to understand what is that formula uh, how to see that formula from, from really the interaction of gluon and quarks, for example. So if there's supersymmetry, it seems everything is, 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 is just, uh, you know, you just write down, you just supersymmetrize the formula to get it. But if there's no supersymmetry, it's, it's, yeah, it's still an open question. So we find a formula, but where does it come from? Yeah, we, we still don't know. Uh, yeah, very good question. So, as I said, the, 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 the structure at loop level is written as a color part times a polarization part. So the polarization part is permutation invariant. It doesn't care about the, 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 the color. So I think that, that one, at least, so we found one loop and there's generalization. But the color part starts to get more and more complicated when you go to higher loop level. It's basically like a, a tree level is just a Park Taylor and now you start to do four limit. So in large N, this color part definitely should simplify a lot. 
right? But it's not as, you know, it's, 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 it's just that. So at each perturbative level, you see the color part very simple, but the polarization part should still uh, be universal for both cases. Yeah. Sorry, what? What happens if you consider normals the HDA in style of terminals? How is the normal the Oh that's a that's a good question. So I don't think I mean yeah in, in, in in this picture, I don't, I don't, I don't see how it arises. But uh, there's some, be some very uh, interesting discussions by Yuting and friends trying to see the anomaly uh, uh, appearing in an own shell statement. So basically, you're trying to formulate uh, the anomaly as, as some statement about the own shell S matrix. I mean, it hasn't been realized in this this picture. But it, generally speaking, in the amplitude language, uh, you see that if you have a theory with anomaly, basically, uh, what you will see is uh, the the properties you, you, you usually your own shell S matrix respect will not be all satisfied. So if you want locality, you will see that it doesn't factorize correctly on some on some pole. Uh, there's some 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 understanding like that. That's that that's the yeah that's that's what I know about this. Um. No, no, not yet. Very good, very good. I mean, at, at, at the moment, it's only one loop and two loop four points, so it's still not there. But there's something I can, I can, I can, uh, I don't know if it's good news, but <laughs> so all this loop, we, we actually, not, not, not restricted to this approach, but there's uh, this, uh, both in this approach and this so-called Q-cut approach, you can see that there's a new representation of the loop integrands, as I, as I mentioned, which are all the, all but one propagators are linear in the, in the loop momenta. So this actually makes the an, an analysis of UV divergence of such loop integrands very different from the, from the usual one. So we still don't understand much about all these integrals. I mean, definitely not beyond one loop. At one loop, there are some, some something. So maybe the understanding of these integrals will, will tell us more about the, uh, what, what, what are the UV behaviors. I mean, it's, it's no longer the usual counting, because now you, in each term, you seem to have much less um, Propagator protecting you, right? So, so it's, it, but then there's a summing over all this, all these different partial fraction terms. So, yeah. Uh, in, in general, I'm just saying that th this is still an integrand story. But uh, this, this, if you can understand all this new representation of the loop integrand better, I mean, how 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 to do integrals with them, then then yeah, it could 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 help understanding the UV behavior. <laughs> Thank you.